Hello, everybody, and welcome to Shades of Spirit. I am psychic medium Jamie. Spirit Walker Nicole, good morning. And we are going to discuss a fun topic today that a lot of us have questions that surround, and that's dreams. So we were just talking before we went on air, and I am one who generally does not remember my dreams. It's interesting because I was talking to our producer, Olivia, and I'm like, yeah, usually when I go to sleep, I turn it all off. Now, I know I'm doing things in dream states, and I'm astral traveling, and I'm learning my lessons in spirit, but I don't remember the majority of them coming up and out of them. But last night, I had made a pack with my spirit team and said, okay, tonight, these are the topics I want to discuss I'd like some clarity on it for myself. I want to be able to speak on behalf of something very fresh. And sure enough, I had four different dreams. They've given me no guidance. They've just given me more things to think about. Mike, thanks a lot, team. Um, But I actually asked for this information and it came about. So I could have gotten up this morning and did a whole journal on what those four dreams were and then looked at them and connected with my spirit team and meditated on them, which I'm going to have to do later. I'm just not going to get all the pieces as fresh as they are in my head. But that was exciting for me. But you dream all the time. I do. <laughs> <laughs> all the time. And they're bizarre. They're bizarre and they're uh, vivid and there's like color and music and like it's like a really sensory experience. Yeah, no. And I'm like over here, wah, wah, except I did have a really cool thing happen. And I woke up a couple mornings ago and had a full on spirit come in and work with me um, to give a message to a couple that we know. And I'll actually be connecting with them today to go over that message. And I don't usually have that happen either. I didn't ask for that one. It just popped up, but it was color. It was vivid. I know exactly what happened, exactly the words, the name of the spirit coming through was just so interesting to think about that. That's the way that he was able to jump in and get that message, but just everyday dreams. Like, I don't know, my kids have the most bizarre dreams as well. Like I just, my one was, Emma was traveling in a different realm and she was with her friend and her friend was in a grocery store because she heard if she ate a bunch of peanut butter granola bars um, that she could get back to earth. But Emma really didn't want the granola bar. I mean, it was just this whole entire thing and she's still laughing about it. But like, what does our subconscious do? Where does it take us? And are we really connecting on a spiritual level or not? And that's what we're going to approach today, right? So I don't know. I've had those dreams where I've got my phone out or I even have, you know, spirit dictionaries. And I'm like, all right, I had a balloon, a donkey and a river. What does it mean? Right. And you start to look up the things and then you're like, I don't actually know what that's supposed to mean. Um, Or you might have really long dreams for you. You're surfing, you know, in Hawaii and the dolphins are around and the angel choir singing. And (laughs) Yeah, that's really what she's like. That's where she goes, guys. And giving away all my secrets. (laughs) I know. But then you wake up in the morning and you know kind of what direction they want you to go in. Yeah. But you've been doing this for a long time, right? So let's talk about first why we dream, because that's an important part of it, you know. And we're not going to get totally into the medical journals for you, right? We're going to give you a little brief synopsis of of why we dream and the purpose of dreaming. So why don't you start that out? Um, there's, there's so many like different reasons. Um, a lot, one of the main ones is to just like, sort of, it's said to sort out the information that you've collected during the day. I mean, do you guys ever have dreams? And then uh, like, maybe you in a split second, as you're walking, you saw like, I don't know, a kid on a skateboard and then you have a dream with, and there's like a kid on a skateboard. And it's just like a way that our, our brain kind of Um, processes what we saw that day and kind of categorizes into like, yeah, I need this for, or I don't need this. So that's, that's one thing. You know, I found that, that when we go into REM, right. And that's almost every 90 minutes. um, This is when most of our dreaming occurs. And I know a lot of us who took even a psychology class in high school, we remember that information. Um, REM is triggered by that set of neurons, right, in our brains that pump activity straight to the brain's visual cortex. And this is where it gets really interesting for me because I'm very interested in people who um, have one sense that's been you know, taken from them or one sense that they were not born with, whether it's your sight, your hearing, um, taste, 
because our other senses become more in tune. And you find that a lot of these people, I'm not going to say all, but a lot of these people that I've come into contact with are more sensitive on their sixth sense, the clairs, their psychic ability, right? So what happens when it's being triggered into that visual cortex um, that's causing us to experience these visualizations with our eyes closed? That's what's really interesting to me is that you can bring and recall all of these, but people who are blind can also dream right? But this is why we dream in that film type like environment. So that's how I see clairvoyantly is if it's a film, black and white pictures or a black and white movie is how it, it works for me. So I think about the psychic abilities and what part of the brain do we tap in for that as well. So I do find it fascinating, fascinating that how blind people dream, especially ones before the age of seven who did not have a lot of things to go off of, right? People that have lost their sight older in life, they have a lot of things that their brain can then retrieve. But for those that don't, all of a sudden they're describing rooms, right? They're using echolocation. They're using different senses in order to work and navigate through life. Um, but this is because their other senses have actually taken over that visual cortex and really evolved it and moved it into a space to where they're able to see without their eyes being open um, or without that ability. Um, so that was really just something that, that struck me about how our brains can adapt, how we can use all of our senses and how we can still dream and still have profound dreams, right? And if you think about some of the musicians that have been blind, right? And compose these pieces and just, they're seeing it in their mind's eye, right? So it's kind of for us, it's about, yes, put the medical part behind it, but then let's also take the, metaphysical part and add it in because so much of what we see do feel um, gets put into our dreams as well. And we'll have some of the most wild dreams. And I'm like, where did I go last night? Right? Like that's part of it for us. It, maybe for me, it's not just up here. It's that I actually left my body and did the work I'm supposed to do in spirit form. So that's, what's really fascinating for us is to be able to combine it all together. Yeah. And another thing that it said that we dream is to just like process our emotions because we're not all mm -hmm. very good at that. <laughs> and it gives us a chance to kind of like you're in that relaxation state. You're, you know, probably hopefully in a safe space <clears throat> and you can just sort of try to start processing that stuff that either happened t that day or, you know, the past week or maybe years. I don't know, but it helps you kind of process and then also it said that it's to practice responses so you ever like if you have a test the next day and you kind of like have a dream that you're sitting I mean we'll get to the most common dreams of course but it's like a, a way to practice of, of what's coming up or how you're going to react or kind of put those things together it's interesting because when we do research, we do research for all of our shows right and then we take our own experiences and add them in because that's part of, of what this is about and when it came up about having those conversations and dealing with emotions, have you had to where you've gone to a job interview, but the night before you couldn't sleep yes. and all you did was think about how you're going to answer the questions or what questions are they going to ask or right. We're, we're planning ahead. Well, it's almost the show. Like I don't <laughs> sleep well the night before the show. Cause I'm like, okay, what if this happens? What if I say something wrong? What, if, you know? So it's, I'm almost like I'm awake, but then I'll kind of drift off, but it'll be like us doing the show. Yeah, which is very interesting because from us doing the show, sometimes we'll wake up in the morning and we scratch half the stuff we were going to do because we have a whole new perspective of what's going on in our lives, right? Um, you know, we're going to come up and talk about most common dreams. Uh, if you have dreams that's like a reoccurring one or a symbol in a dream, you can throw it in the chat boxes and let us know. And we can check in with your spirit team through the show as well and see what maybe there's, you know, sometimes there's hidden messages within our dreams as well. And so we need to talk it out with someone in order to sort it out. So you can give us a call at 1-800-930-2819. Um, but yeah, when we get back from break, I want to really get into most common dreams because you guys are going to start to see um, how they can relate and you guys aren't the only ones having these dreams and why are we having these dreams and we're going to talk to spirit and connect with them on why we're going through these things in order for us to heal in order for us to be able to have that self-expression so ha have you ever woken up where you feel like your throat's tight yes yep okay and it, and that's a big thing for us is because in our dream as we're processing those emotions we're speaking right so a lot of times if you are someone that's more passive and you go inward you're not allowing yourself to to talk 
outside of yourself. But when we go into that dream state, we have an opportunity to be expressive and to communicate. But we may wake up back into the physical body and all of a sudden that's closed off again because that's not our norm. So paying attention even to the simplest parts of our body when we wake up in the morning will give us more insight on what we need to work on and work towards in our physical awakened state. So stay tuned. Uh, this coming Friday, I'm excited because we have our Facebook Live, our monthly Facebook Live with the lovely LaShawn and Ashley. So there'll be sketches, there'll be readings, there'll be laughs, there'll be cries. You, you don't know what's going to happen, especially when we get this bunch together. So, you know, Spirit Walker Nicole is going to channel messages as well, and we read those on air. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. So that's on our Facebook page, Shades of Spirit LLC. That'll be at 6.30 p.m. And then in two weeks on the first Sunday in February is our sacred circle. I'm having fun with those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're a lot of fun. We have about 10 or 11 people that get together. We don't take any more than that because everybody gets a reading. It's about a 15 to 20 minute reading like per person. You can bring questions. You can just leave it open to spirit. Sometimes a loved one comes through. Um, we, you know, we don't know what to expect either, but that happens. And it's just a great way to check in monthly with spirit, your spirit team, and kind of make sure you're validated and get some clarity and on the right track. So that is the first Sunday in February at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can also register on our Shades of Spirit LLC page. All right, you guys, we'll be right back after this break. Hello and welcome back, everybody. I'm psychic medium Jamie. Spirit Walker Nicole. Shades of Spirit today is talking about dream interpretation, how dreams work, and how we can really link them to the spirit communication and the spirit messages as well. So we've talked a bit about just, you know, some basic stuff about why we dream. It's our brain's way of processing and our subconscious mind, um, how we go through that REM, REM sleep about every 90 minutes. So we're constantly coming back into a state of being able to dream. Um, my dreams, I have had about four, which probably meant that I hit that REM sleep close to four times last night. Um, if the dog didn't wake me up at three, who knows what have happened. Uh, but no, it's really about, you know, understanding kind of the, the basic principles of it. And now let's take it to that spiritual level as well and try and understand what's going on and what are they trying to tell us and what are these messages or signs and symbols that we have. But what's funny is that, you know, a lot of us will share a lot of the most common dreams that we've had. So we made a list and we're going to talk about each one of them and let us know if you're having those dreams as well, because it's kind of cool to see if you figured out why you're having that. So what's your first one on your list? Being chased. <laughs> so I like this one because I, I mean, I think, I don't know. I don't know if there's anybody that's ever not had a dream like this, but it generally means that you're trying to um, avoid something in your life, whether it be your daily life or like just something. There's something that is... <clears throat> Uh, chasing you something that is following you and it might also be like a desire to escape your fears or something else that you want whatever it is and it's just chasing you um, it's really important to kind of pay attention to what is chasing you um, it's said that if it's an animal it's kind of like that raw like passion side of you um, that you can't control or whatever it is. And so that's kind of like usually an animal will come into that. Um, it's also important to pay attention to if you know the person, if it's a person, do you know them? Do you not know them? Um, can you describe them? And that's if something you need should really keen in on and it kind of, it, it might answer a lot of your questions. I like that. And if it's that raw passion, you're opening up your sacral chakra and your root chakra. So there you go. Um, for me, you know what, my number one dream that I can recall the most, a reoccurring one, is losing teeth. Now, how many of you have had those? Sometimes they are triggered. I mean, I've got three kiddos uh, by them uh, losing their teeth, right? But sometimes not. And it is one of the most common dreams out there is losing teeth. Now, I don't just lose one. I will spit teeth out in my hand. And it's like I'm a shark because it's almost like they keep um, regenerating. And then I spit them back out in my hand. And I'm so concerned about why it's doing that. And it's, you know, I'm not going to get super graphic, but it's gross. Like, you know, there is blood in my hand. And I'm like, what is going on? Why am I losing all of these teeth? Um, sometimes for that, uh, we are worried about our attractiveness, right? Or our appearance. Uh, sometimes you're concerned about your ability to communicate, or you said something embarrassing, or you want to, you said something and you wish you could take it back, right? Well, if we don't have teeth, we don't have a tongue. 
and we're not able to communicate that, right? So it's almost like we're silencing ourselves. Um, losing our personal power is also one of those as well. Um, for me, it I will wake up in the morning and like click my down. <laughs> do I have all of my teeth left? Um, but for me, I know that's about expression. I don't have them nearly as much anymore, which has been fantastic. I'd have to say over the past year and a half, two years of doing a lot of processing, um, owning who I am from the inside out, allowing myself to speak freely and to speak clearly and to have those moments to where I'm no longer like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that because I'm thinking before I'm reacting. That dream has stopped. And I just kind of put those pieces together. Like I've done a lot of that inner work in order for that dream, that symbol, that sign to go away. Because for me, that was the worst possible one for, I mean, you're just like, Oh, here's my teeth. Right. And you couldn't figure out why And I was always alone and it was dark. And that makes a lot of sense because I would go inward so often and not communicate and express. So that was a big one for me. What else do you have? Falling. Um, usually from great heights, but a lot of people, this, I think they said when in our research, this was the number one, most common dream. And it's, it's a sign that something in your life isn't going well. Um, and it's also could be a symbol of fear. And so if you find yourself falling in your dreams a lot, that's, that's what's going on. I love that. Uh, naked in public. Yeah. <laughs> I've never had that one, um, which is interesting because you think a lot of people have talked about that. Or if you're standing and giving a speech, right, even when they when you're in class and your, your teachers are like, now picture everyone in their underwear. Um, that was way back when. I don't think they do that anymore. That's, that's really not kosher. But um, it is afraid of revealing your imperfections, revealing your shortcomings, right? Your vulnerability is a big one when it comes down to being naked in public. What else? Uh, taking a test. <laughs> That's a big one. Yeah. So it's, if you're dreaming about taking a test or like being late for one or just being unprepared, it just kind of shows that you're unprepared for something or multiple things in your daily life. So if you find yourself, you know, like not being able to find the room of your test or those like anxiety dreams, that's probably what's going on. You're just feeling um, unprepared for something that's coming up. Falling. Oh my gosh. I know, but I want to go back to that one. So I don't know how many of you, when you do the falling part of it, um, stop right beforehand. Like my guides are showing me that they're telling you to jump, right? So if you're having that falling dream, I want you to go back in and I want you, cause they're showing like a gigantic bird out of some sort of, you know, movie or a dragon. I want you to ask for that to come in. If you have reoccurring falling dreams, ask for them to be able to catch you as you're falling and take you where you need to go. Because what's happening is, is that you're getting the, the opportunity to experience that freedom and to go out. And yet you stop short just to the ground because your safety net hit and they want you to start soaring. So I don't know who's listening that's having this thought right now, but all of a sudden they were like, hey, remind them to now ask to be taken, right? It's move falling into flying. So if you have constant falling dreams, ask them now to bring you into a state of flying. Let you do it or have assistance with it um, and to be taken to the place that you are needing to go to in your subconscious. Sorry, I did looked at the list again and they were like, ding. So what else do you have on the list here? Um, a fun, easy, nice one for a Monday morning of infidelity. You know. <laughs> Good morning, San Diego. Uh huh. Or everywhere. Everywhere. Yep. That one is interesting, though, because it doesn't mean that your spouse is going to be cheating on you um, or that they have cheated on you, right? Um, it does indicate issues of trust, loyalty, and communication in a relationship. So if you've had those dreams, Maybe go back and think, why? Why do I feel as though this person's going to be cheating? Or why are they cheating and I'm walking in? Or figure that part out. You know, what is it within you? Because sometimes it's not necessarily with them, it's within ourselves. Where are we mistrusting? Where are we not listening to the cues? Why are we not opening up to that love they have to give us? A lot of times it could be relationships we've had in the past that have led us to think that way. Maybe you were cheated on. Maybe it was just someone that you thought that was gonna be your forever um, had you know turned into somebody different. Um, maybe things had happened to you in your previous relationships. So it is about communicating not only with your partner, but with yourself and really realizing why am I having these dreams, right? Um, and that kind of just 
that's a big one for a lot of people because a lot of us are insecure and we aren't quite sure in our relationships because of past is issues that have happened. So really getting to the core of that and cutting those cords and releasing those individuals energy from you might actually stop those dreams. And it's my, I work with uh, a bunch of guys and one of them came to work the other day and he's like, you're not going to believe this. And I'm like, what's going on? He's like, my wife is super pissed at me because I cheated on her in her dream. <laughs> She woke up mad. She wouldn't talk to me. She threw a, th a few things. I'm like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, we might want to we might want to revisit that one, right? Um, but no, that that is a big one that we have because we do we become vulnerable, and that's that's a big one for that cheating dream. What about another one? Uh, flying, actually, you kind of hit on this a little bit earlier, um, but flying. If you dream that, it's like uh, freedom. And it symbolizes freedom and independence or, or a desire to flee or escape the realities of life. So kind of when you're flying around up there, you know that you can't really do that in reality. So it's cool to be able to kind of do it in your dreams. And I don't know, some people kind of become aware that if they're flying, that it's a dream. And then they kind of will lucid dream a little bit and fly somewhere that they want to go. So Terry Collette, I love the couple things that you put up here. So I want to hit on two before we go to break. The first one we will actually get to at the end segment about connecting with our loved ones in spirit. So she's having some very vivid dreams um, with individuals coming in from her family and her mom is 85 and having some health issues. So we'll give you some more you know, clarity and guidance on how you can really get those messages from those loved ones in the last section. Um, but as for your fish dream, that was very interesting because she's talking about how her husband had taken these fish out and put them in cups and they ended up in their bed and some died and some gave birth right and she's asking her husband to help her and he said everything will be okay and then all of a sudden the tank was too full to put the fish back okay that's a lot going on right there so your spirit team checked in with me and they were like okay first of all you've just hit a whole bunch of big things rebirth and death right so letting go and shedding it's about um, weeding out those individuals in your life that are not serving your highest and best. The ones that did pass those fish, those are representations of energies around you, meaning people in your collective whole, maybe people in your inner circle that need to kind of just kind of, I'm not going to say go away forever, but, but be shifted out for you um, and allow that rebirth of those fish that were, you know, birthing babies in your bed is a very big element of, of new things to come, new individuals to come, fresh energy for you. You are in a transition state and I feel like it's been quite some time and you're like, I'm ready to do this now. And yet asking for help and hearing that everything's going to be okay leads us to have to do that within ourselves. And so you're going to have to go inward. And you're really going to have to do some of this work of letting go and starting to feel that freedom and bringing yourself back up energetically to start bringing in who needs to be with you and you need to be with them at a higher vibration in order to continue moving forward in this transition. Um, so we're going to go to break here. We have a numerology class coming up. We also have a release and intentions workshop coming up in February. So you can check out our Facebook page for those as well. You can also check us out on Transformation Talk Radio to hear any of our previous episodes and see all the cool things they do as well. So we will catch you right after this break. Hello, everybody. I'm psychic medium Jamie. Spirit Walker Nicole. One of these days, we should be each other. No. And I could be Spirit Walker Nicole, and no. I could talk to angels and guides all day long and go surfing in Hawaii with them. Uh, mm -hmm. And you can deal with what I deal with every day. <laughs> no? Happiness, joy. Happiness, joy. Yeah, that's what we'll call it. All right, you guys. So we are talking about dreams today. Uh, I want to get to Cindy's dream. Um, Cindy Schaefer. And then we're going to talk about nightmares, night terrors, and sleep paralysis. So if you have experienced this oh, yourself, light, light Monday yeah, topic. it's no problem. Um, if you've experienced them yourself or your children have experienced them, you definitely want to tune in for that part. But Cindy said falling into a shallow water full of snakes. Okay. Well, that already gave me the duality. Okay. So unfortunately you're not swimming in the shallow water with the koi fish. Um, koi fish we think of as just this beautiful element. It's flowy. Um, their colors are amazing. They school together, right? Nope. You decided to fall into the water with snakes. Well, snakes can mean a couple different things. Um, they can mean toxic toxicity, poisonous relationships, um, dirty spaces, right? Um, or they can mean healing. 
And so what they were talking about with me as I was tuning in on break is that you are facing a duality right now within yourself. Um, and I think that there is somebody in your in your life that might be a little bit more toxic um, with their own energy and it's bringing you down and it drains you and it's it's something that can be alleviated. Um, they're putting you in this element because it's for you to decide, are you going to take the toxic side of the snake, the poisonous side of the snake, or if you are bit by the snake, will you take it in as healing serum, right? And allow yourself to be able to, to start to heal from the inside out. The water part of it is purity cleanliness. It brings clarity, right? If you can look into the water and see it clear, that's going to help decide where your dream is going with you. If the water is murky and you've got these snakes in there, it is really time to figure out how to clean all of that out. It's energy that's being stored that we can let go of. Water is also a fabulous conduit of energy as well. So you're adding the water element of that conduit of energy into the secret meaning of what these snakes are. And so you're going to have to go within. If you meditate, do a quick meditation, check it out and see what it looks like again, if you can, if you can bring it back up for your, your subconscious and then really kind of start working on that for you. But they wanted me to hit that up first. Maybe also avoid having an Indiana Jones marathon like we did last week with the kid because oh, snakes. there's snakes, there's Everywhere. spiders, there's water, there's something for Scorpions. you. Scorpions. Mm -hmm. All right. So nightmares, night terror, sleep paralysis. This is one that hits home for me tremendously. I've experienced it. Two of my three children have experienced all three of these and learning about them and how they are affecting us is very interesting. But I also know that from the medical side of it, I experienced it, the spiritual side of it, the metaphysical side of it. And so I could sit in a room and have a discussion with someone who is very much on the medical track of why we have these. And I can have a reason why I have them based from spirit experiences each and every time. Um, so, you know, how do you want to start it out? This is, this is you, man. <laughs> you know how this happens to you. I, I've never experienced it. Thank goodness. Yeah. Okay. So that's the angel medium. And that, and that's, what's interesting as well. You don't have dreams like this. You no. don't have the sleep paralysis. You don't have the visitations like I've had in the past. And, but your dreams are usually light. They're connecting with your angels, your guides, where I'm working in the lower vibrations a lot of the time. And I'm helping spirits and, and people, you know, bring that energy up. So I stay in that vibration. So, you know, nightmares are when we're in an active state of REM. So we can remember our nightmares. Um, you know, it could go along with some of these, you know, being chased. Maybe you are being chased with someone you can't see who's out to like get you. You know, I've had those dreams where I feel like somebody's trying to, to hurt me. Um, I have to look in and see why, who in my circle is, is doing that to me? Who is, or am I doing it to myself? But nightmares, we can remember. Uh, night terrors, not so much, right? So nightmares, they say, can occur to kids starting age three to five. So a lot of this, all of these can start in childhood age. Um, and they're estimated 10 to 50% of children have nightmares severe enough to disturb their parents or their caregivers. Um, I definitely did that to my mom and two of my kids um, did that to me. But nightmares were not our thing. It was the night terrors. And let me tell you, when I first experienced this with my oldest, um, who she was about two, both kids were two when this started. And I realized from them that that's exactly how I felt, what I was going through. And I could start to recall the situations that caused me to go into that night terror. They're less common. The ages vary, right? Um, and we, we really don't understand how they work still, right? They're not sure what the percentages are. You look at one article, it says one thing and another one, another thing. They're a little less common. So they, they don't know how that's affecting your brain either because it's not in that active sleep state. Um, when spirit energy comes around for me, it causes that night terror to kick in for me. I have not had one of these. I've knocked on wood um, probably in three years, um, but I was having them regularly as a child. And I could remember sitting up when I finally came out of it and having an energy standing at the foot of my bed. Um, my first kid, she was definitely the one to where I had to walk and her eyes would be rolled back in the back of her head and I would have to talk. You can't necessarily wake the kids out of that night terror state. Now I had a pediatrician I loved and he said, just talk to them. Don't bring them out of that state. Um, and they will slowly just start to kind of melt, if you will. And they won't remember it in the morning. And sure enough, they don't. 
But as a parent, I mean, my son, if, if I would have been back in the day uh, where they believed in witches and all these things going on, I probably would have had him exercised because he looked like he was possessed. And unfortunately for him and for the rest of us, it was probably three or four nights a week. And he would get into the first three hours or so of sleep, which is about the time that sleep paralysis or that night terrors start. And then all of a sudden I can hear him. You don't, they're not yelling. It's not like the nightmare type of environment. And his eyes will be rolled back in his head. It really looked like he was having seizures, but he wasn't. Um, He would become stiff armed and he would sit straight up and yet no one's home. Right. And so then I would have to kind of lay him back down and I would have to talk to him. And there were years and years that he slept next to me on the floor. Um, And when he'd do that, he didn't have the night terrors. And I started putting those pieces together that when he's alone, he's more vulnerable because he's probably my most open kid just has never fully embraced it because the fear kicks in. Um, But when he would sleep next to me, um, he might start to have one and I would just talk to him and lay him back down and then he would just relax into it. So he felt more protected um, on that level. Now, sleep paralysis. I know a lot of us have had it. You probably could find this being the most argumentative topic in this 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 discussion of nightmares, night terrors, sleep paralysis. Um, You have those medical people that are like, you know, this is the reason why, this is what your brain's doing, this is what's happening. And then you have those of us that have it and yet are with spirit while it's happening, where we can't move. And it is the scariest thing I have probably ever experienced multiple times. Now that's not all fear-based energies coming in or lower-based energies. I actually had my first one as a child, and I don't remember all the details to him, but the first one that could be validated was probably, I don't know, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. And we were staying at um, family's house and it was New Year's Eve and we were sleeping in the living room and all of a sudden I couldn't move and I could feel, I knew what it felt like when spirit was coming in, especially at night. And I can't move. I can't talk. I can't, I can't signal anybody, but there was a spirit in the corner. And then they finally had me calm down and I could see her making hats. And it was this little lady and she had on an old fashioned dress and big shoes and she was up and down on things and she was making hats and she had a big hat on, very detailed for me, right? So it's like I'm in that REM nightmare state, but it wasn't, I couldn't move. I was paralyzed. And so when I finally got enough of it, I was able to finally bring myself out of it. And so I sat around at breakfast before I went to work and they're like, "Ah, I don't know anybody like that. Well, it just so happened that uh, my mother-in-law at the time was talking to her mom and she said, she called me at work and she goes, I need to tell you this right now. You have no idea what you saw. She goes, that was my great, great grandmother. She was a hat maker. So it can happen on good and it can happen on those darker times. I have had a very evil entity come in during a camping trip and stare at me and commit and I could not move. And that was probably the most fear I had ever experienced. And that was up in Big Bear, like very haunted areas in that area as well. Um, And I could not wake up and I was sweating and I was, I was paralyzed. Um, And then I had one other time that really shook me to a core level because I couldn't see him and I could see lights. It was very, um, you guys will know, I'm not big on the 5D. I don't understand how all that works. And you aren't going to hear us talk a lot about aliens because I don't have a lot of experience in that. Um, but it was that vibe feeling. And I, it was coming up from behind and around me and I couldn't move, right? And that's tough when we're in those positions, but it's even harder when we don't understand them with our children. And it didn't matter what I watched. It didn't matter what my kids watched. They didn't watch bad stuff. Um, they would still have these moments. And so is it just how our brain responds at night when we're sleeping or is it more? And that's what leads all of this into, you know, to be interpreted differently, which I love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no experiences for you, huh? Well, I got nothing. I got nothing for that segment, but I, I like your take on it. Well, it's just, it's different. That's, that's all it is. Is like, you know, how many of you've had those experiences or your kids and, and we're looking for more answers. I think there's more out there. At least I know for me there, there is, and I'm able to explain it with my children. Um, and yet they don't remember really any of those moments. And I'm actually kind of happy. Right. And once I took control of my house and my situation, my environment, and I became empowered and I let the fear leave, it stopped. It's like the whole house died down 
which was really interesting. Um, March, we're going to have an Angels Around Us workshop. So that'll be March 20th at 11 a.m. That is on our Facebook page. Spirit Walker Nicole will be taking us through all sorts of different levels of angels, phylums, um, ones that we've never heard of. So I would definitely join us on that. And I do past life readings. So you guys can book your past life readings on our website at shadesofspirit.com. Uh, it's a really good way to start moving energy out and understanding why certain things are happening in your life um, right now and be able to cut cords and move forward. So let's take a break and then we're going to get into psychic messages and dreams. See you after these messages. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I am psychic medium, Jamie. Spirit Walker, Nicole. All right. We are closing off our segment today on dreams and how we process them, but more on the spiritual aspect of it and not necessarily the medical journal side of it. Um, I love that Jamie Fogel brought up here on our Facebook page um, something to remind you guys about before we finish off with the psychic messages and dreams section is we are in control. So there are essential oils. Jamie, throw it up on the page. We've got people totally interacting today. What essential oil is good to put on your big toe and why for them? Um, you can use essential oils for helping you in that dream state. Also, before you go to bed, I used to do this every single night with my kids is that I would put myself in a white bubble of light, them in a white bubble of light, and then I would ask our angels and guides to come in and clear out the rest of the house and then circle that in a bubble of light. So I will go through and say that this house is enveloped in a white light. It is pure and I only want what's love and light for everybody in the home. And that does help kind of alleviate some of those night terrors, nightmares um, within the home. And, you know, I can only speak on my experience. There's no documentation on that anywhere. But for me, it is about owning your space, bringing in your angels. Another angel to bring in that would be great is. Oh, Archangel Michael for that, for protection and there's so many different angels that you can bring in it's that's there's an angel for that i like to say that because there is i mean and it's just whatever if if you're thinking about protection and you just want like your, your animals your family protected or whatever just bring them in and uh you know get right to work that's what we should have called the workshop there's an angel for that all right so with that being said psychic messages and dreams this is a cool one i like this one because so often in our readings, they'll, uh, we'll have a client just when, you know, when we're talking, they'll just be like, oh yeah, I, I, I think my, my grandpa came in to visit me last night and, or, you know, and then they're wanting to know, is it, is it my imagination? Was it just a dream or did this really happen? Yep. And that's the thing is that, you know, how do we, and that's, how do we decipher dream visitation from loved ones? to just a dream with our loved ones in it. Mm -hmm. There's there's some things to look for. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. <clears throat> um, would be, it feels extremely real and vivid. And it's, as opposed to sometimes when you wake up, you kind of just feel like you just remember fragments of dreams or, uh, and as the, the day goes on, it fades or whatever. Mm -hmm. These you, you hold on to, you can describe it in uh, extreme detail. And uh, you will probably remember it for a very long time. You guys got to remember, though, that it's a lot of times in color. So if you dream in black and white like I do or neutral colors and you start seeing this vivid color come about um, or all of a sudden you really are smelling that cherry pie and yet you don't normally do that in your regular dreams, you know, maybe if you're in a dream, a regular dream and it's raining, um, you're not necessarily, some of you will, which is awesome, be able to smell the rain hitting the asphalt. But all of a sudden you, you smell that cherry pie or that particular perfume or cologne um, that is bringing that vivid dream to life, or you can hear their voices. Sometimes that happens as well. That's because they're with you at that moment. Mm -hmm. um, it could be that the person or animal, a lot of us have animal visitation dreams. And I don't know if everybody really thinks about that as, you know, our animals are, are part of our family. And when you dream about them coming to visit you, um, that's, that's a thing. Um, usually when you see a, have a dream visitation, whether it be from a person or an animal, they appear healthy. So, you know, like really healthy. And the theory behind that is they've, they've already, they've reconnected with that God source energy, however you want to put it, and are in their best state. Mm -hmm. And they're coming to us um, like the best version of themselves. Which happens also in mediumship readings is for me, they will come in, um, they might come in first 
the way that they passed because they want validation. And as soon as it's validated from my client, they are now whole. They're one, right? So they're able to show what it was like in order for validation, but then they are. They're more on that healthy. They're, they're no longer attached to this physical shell that we're in, right? That's what holds the disease, not our spiritual self. We may need to ascend and do more over there, but, but that's that correlation. Um, if you have to ask, this yeah. is the one that I debate on. So we put it on the list, but hit that one up. And I'm going to tell you why I debate on this one. It's basically the, the, the thought is if you have to ask if it was a visitation dream, it probably wasn't. And I don't like this one either, but it was in the, in our research, but they're saying um, generally you just know, like, it's so clear and obvious that you're like, oh, absolutely. I know my grandpa came. I know my mom came um, because of that detail and that vividness. And if you're kind of like, I don't know, I kind of remember then it said that no, it, it probably wasn't a visitation dream because you don't have that definitive memory or experience. Right. So that's the one where, you know, we give you the information though. We don't want to hide stuff because it's only based on what Spirit Walker and Holland, I believe, but I don't really believe that either. I believe that visitation dreams can come in any forms or sizes or shapes. And that if you really feel as though they're there and they're giving you messages, um, but it's not vivid color or it's not, you know, this profound experience where all of a sudden you're hearing everyone's voices, it still can be a visitation dream, right? They can still be coming in. So I like that Cindy asked, um, why can't I see a loved one's face, but I know who it is. Sometimes our conscious mind and our subconscious mind are at odds. And so we may feel that we are ready to see them. And yet, if we do see them, it might bring up emotions and stuff. And so our, our team and everybody's working together to help us kind of build that relationship with them. But, um, but they're just talking about timing for a lot of us. It's yeah. also about energy. Like it takes a lot of energy um, for a loved one to come into our dreams. Absolutely. And so if they're still learning how to do that, maybe they can only just get that energy of their essence or whatever it is just to be like knocking on that door before they can fully like come to fruition. Um, so it's not necessarily that they don't want to show their face. It's just, they're learning how to do this or that you're not ready. You know, it might be, you, you aren't quite in that space, especially for people who've just lost people. Um, I have heard that before, but you know, Spirit Walker Nicole's right. Sometimes spirit is just still trying to navigate how much energy does does it take for them? You know, remind you guys that spirit needs energy to amplify that space. Um, I like though this part that when we dream and we have that connection, we're filled with peace and love. That's how we should be left is in that space. As long as we're putting it out to the universe, that that's what we want. Yeah. Dream visitations. Usually when your family, like, let's say it's your mom and, and maybe you had some friction or whatever, when your mom uh, comes to visit, it's not going to be like, Oh, I told you that was going to happen. Oh, well, if you would have just listened to me, it's not like that. It's positive. It's loving. It's all that stuff. And I'll just leave it at the word stuff is, is in the past. And, you know, she's on the other side and she can see things from a different perspective and is learning and healing. And when she does come, it's going to be just like with the important stuff, not that little, just nitpicky, whatever that um, you might have remembered. Now, the thing with Terry for you is that um, I do want to hit that real quick is your mom being 85. We know that that within, you know, the span of life that she is coming towards the end of her life. Now it could still be another 10 to 15 years. So no one's dismissing her at this point, but we kind of go back into that childlike state um, consciously. Okay. So children don't know the difference between spirit being here and humans. We are taught that that isn't real. That's a pretend friend, right? And then we start to grow out of it unless you're embracing it with your family and, and people that are open and they'll continue that process. They might shut down a little bit. The adults are very similar to that as well. So your mom is opening up and feeling the energies around. Um, great grandmother that I have is 97, has felt her grandmothers around and her mom for years and years. Doesn't mean that she's going anytime soon. It just means that they're ready. She can see them now and they're making their presence clear to you as well because you're in that environment to be able to share that experience and that reconnection with her. So that's what they're showing me for you. And Jamie Fogel's question is, is a very matter of fact one. What if you feel dark energies around you? or have had a nightmare about dark energies around you um, or spirits. And, you know, how do you, how do you know that it's really there? Um, 
you know what, sometimes it's our conscious mind and sometimes it's our subconscious mind and sometimes they're just passing through. Send them away with Archangel Michael and love and light and watch the room lift. You're going to know that they were really there if that's the case. It's about empowerment, empowerment. So you got just, yeah, there's an angel for that and you are the one who takes control. So whether it's quote unquote real or not, just take care of it. Absolutely. All right. I want to thank you guys. Tune into I Have Soul Radio and Shades of Spirit Radio on Transformation Talk Radio and we'll see you next week.